So far, we have talked about editing materials as a whole, where when I edit the material, for instance, this wood, when I go to edit that, it will edit the material on the entire face or the entire group of the, uh, of, the mater of the box that I've applied it to. And it will stay that size within this material so that whenever I use it again, it will always be this size or it will always be the way I've edited it. But what I want to look at now is how do I edit a material on just one face? What if I want to rotate this wood grain or if I want to stretch it out or move it a little bit on just this one face? How do I do that? That's what this video is going to be about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Apple Z what I've just done so that I'm starting from scratch and I'm going to go to my wood material. Same one I just used. And I'm, going to, I'm going to choose this one because it's a little bit more obvious. Um, so I, I'm first going to open this, this group up and I'm going to bucket fill by clicking on this and typing in my B for bucket. I'm going to bucket fill that wood grain or that wood planking all the way around on each face. And I'm doing this one at a time because I want to edit the faces one at a time. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to rotate this wood grain on this face so that it's going in the same direction as this wood grain. And how do I do that? I have to right click on that face and I usually have to do this while the bucket is selected. Um, so it un understands that I'm referring to just that face and just that texture. I go down to texture and I click on position. Now what happens when I click on position is I get these four reference points. And these four reference points all do something a little bit different. Um, and this is one of the only times in SketchUp that you have to actually left click and hold down. This is, this is like a sub-menu within, within an action. So for some reason they've designed it so that this is the kind of thing that you have to hold down while you, while you do what it is you want to do. So the first thing I can do if I'm holding down on my left click, I can move this texture anywhere I want. So I can align it however I want it to be aligned. And this is going to be very helpful um, if ever I'm using an image or if I'm using something that needs to line up to an edge. Um, so that's the, that's the first and most basic thing I can do. I can also hold down on the red click, um, this, this little red pin over here, and what that's going to do is it's going to do the same exact thing, which is basically just moving it around. You can see that it's got a little move symbol on it. If I click and hold down on the blue pin, what I'm doing is I'm able to stretch it. So I can stretch or squish the material. And that's happening on just, you'll notice it's only happening on just this one face um, and just this one bit of material. And you'll also see that you get a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see in your, on your video, but you'll get a little bit of a blue dotted outline and it shows you how the tiling repeats over and over again. So this is also another way to kind of punctuate the fact that every material is a tile. Um, when I go over to my yellow pin, what this does is this kind of moves it forward or backward and kind of distorts the perspective. I almost never use this. This is kind of a tool that's almost exclusive for photo modeling and taking a, a picture of a building and stretching the, stretching the image to fit so that it um, warps in the right direction. So for a straight up material, I almost would never use this. The two that I use the most are the stretch and, and squish, which is what I call it, that kind of stretch and squish, squish function. And I also use the, the um, green pin, which will, if I pull it in, and note, I'm holding down on it with my left click, and I have to keep holding down on it, to, and, then, and then when I'm ready to let it go, I can release. So I can, I can tile this as small as I want, or I can stretch it to be as big as I want. And I can also, with this same pin, I can use this to rotate it. And you see I've got my little rotate um, wheel here and it maintains a, um, a little arc in the exact position so that I, so that I know that I'm going along the, the, um, the rotate that I want it to be on. So I, I can maintain my same scale is what I should be saying. Um, so now that I've finished that, I can right click and say done. And what it's going to do is it's going to make this texture unique on just this one face. So if I go back to my home texture and, and click on that texture and click on this face again, it's going to go back to the way it was before. So I'm going to hit Apple Z on that. But if I sample from this texture 
using my eyedropper. So for me, I'm going to hit my um, command button on my Mac. If you're using a PC, you can just go to your eyedropper and your materials palette. And I can click on that, and I can use this now to reference. So if I click to this, to this face, it's going to continue that pattern. And now I can move around to this face and click here, and it's going to continue that all the way down. So I can get something that is uniform all the way across. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of the, the basic introduction to that. Let's go ahead and delete this guy. And I'm going to show you another example. I'm going to go to my tiles here. And I'm going to do a floor. And I'm just going to use the default tiles that are within SketchUp. So it's not going to be very pretty. My apologies. Um, but I'm going to open this face up. By double, or this group, excuse me, by double clicking on it. And what I want is I want this black and white checkered tile to happen in the middle. And I want this little mosaic-y um, border to happen on the outside. So I can see right away that my issue is that I've got this border that tiles in this direction. And then I want my, uh, for, this, for this imaginary project, I want this um, black and white tile in the middle to be on a 45 degree angle. So how do I do that? The first thing I do is I right click on this space for the tile in the middle and I'm going to go to my position. So you can see here is the boundary of this tile repeat. This is all I've got is, is this little four section of tile repeating over and over again. So I'm going to click on my rotate tool and I'm going to, I'm going to drag this around until I can see that it's at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. So you have to be a little careful with this. It takes a little bit of dexterity to, to kind of get used to how this works. And then I'm going to drag it and kind of fit it to roughly where it looks like it's about centered. And right click and say done. So I've now gotten what I want with that face. With this face, it's going to be a little trickier because I need to actually, or with the edge, I should say, I need to actually divide it up into, sep into separate faces. So I need to create a line here from this point to this point all the way around. Click all the way around. And then I need to select my face, right click, and go to my texture position. So the first thing I need to do is I need to scale this down so that it aligns with that edge, like this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say done. Now I know that this is the appropriate scale to go all the way around, so I can sample from this using my little eyedropper tool and I can click on all the other faces and sample all the way around. This one's going to be easy on this side as I rotate around because I can see it's already giving me the opposite um, direction. So when I say position, because it's this, it, it's not, it, hasn't, it hasn't actually reversed the position, but because I've got this band of tile at the top, it's, um, it's going to look exactly the same. So I can pull this into position and click Done. Now on this one, I can right-click on this face and go to my texture, and I'm going to go to position, and I can simply rotate. I'm not going to pull far out because I don't want to up the scale. I'm just going to rotate along the, along the uh, compass here until I get my 90-degree uh, rotation, and then I'm going to move it into place and click Done. And I'm going to do something a little different on this one. On this one, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go to my texture position. And within texture position, I can right-click again. So this is now kind of going three steps in. And I can rotate 90 degrees and rotate. I can keep going another 90 if I want, and then the final 90, or I could have just done 180 to begin with. So I'm going to my 90 degrees again. And move that in position and click done and click. Now here's something to notice. If I do another rectangle and I do a S for select, double click, G to group and P to push pull and just match that there. If I do another rectangle and I want this exact thing, if I go back to my home materials and I open this face up and I click on the home materials and I drop that on there, right click to close, You'll notice it's, it's a different scale and it's a different uh, orientation. It's not rotated. What I would need to do if I want this specific property off of this face is I would need to go to this face right here and actually sample 
using my eyedropper tool, well first let me get my bucket highlighted, using my eyedropper tool I need to sample from this face and click to that face. So I'm actually calling out, I want these properties off of this material here. And then S to select and close. Um, if I decided that at some point on one of these I want it to be back to what it originally was, I can right click on that face and go to my texture and I can just go to reset position and that's going to bring me right back to my original, uh, my original properties of that one texture. But luckily it's not going to ruin the properties of the texture in that. So um, this is a little bit definitely more complicated and definitely more uh, involved, but ultimately you'll have much, much, much more control over your materials on each face and you'll be able to use your materials to get exactly what it is that you want.